Currently in the U.S., federal minimum wage is only $7.25 an hour, which is little over $15,000 a year before taxes at full time, if you don't take any sick days at all, ever. However, if you get tipped at your job, you could be making a base pay as low as $2.13 an hour, something that not everyone knows, but that is actually the legal federal minimum wage for tipped employees in America. Even in, even in states and cities that have a higher base pay for tipped employees, like in the most expensive city, one of the most expensive cities in America, New York City, they're still only paid $5 an hour base pay. However, a new trend is taking place in a number of restaurants, which are eliminating tipping altogether, and instead they choose to pay their employees a higher wage. Notices at the New York City restaurant, Ricky's Restaurant, state that tipping is not required nor expected. Now, this may sound good, but I have a couple issues with it. The cost of paying the servers more is actually being reflected in the cost of the food. Tips are factored into the, price, the menu prices now. Restaurant owners are calling this an attempt to protect workers from stingy tippers and unreliable wages. Fair enough. I agree that those are serious problems. However, my problem with this is two main things. First of all, most of these restaurants are already pretty upscale and successful, so they claim. So why are they not absorbing any of the cost? Instead, they're passing it all on to the customer. And my second issue with this is why not simply give the wait staff a higher wage, no matter how you no matter how you offset the cost. Why not just give them the higher wage and not discourage tipping? Why not why not just say nothing at all and let them continue to get tipped? Several restaurants, including the Pizza Hut where I used to work at in Florida, of all things, I have to give them credit for at least paying their tipped employees standard minimum wage, even though they didn't have to. There is also the question of how much more these these uh, waiters and waitresses and other tipped employees are are going to get paid, and if it's going to be enough to actually cover their living expenses, because these restaurants are un under no legal obligation to pay them any particular amount over two dollars and thirteen cents. But here are some numbers for you, just to keep in mind that seven twenty five has been the minimum wage since 2007. It has not changed since then. However, since 1978, CEO compensation has increased by 725%. $10.86 now hour is what wages would be if they had kept up with the rate of inflation over the last 40 years. But $21.72 an hour is what wages would be if they had kept up with worker productivity since 1968. $16.62 is the average wage estimated in this country needed to support one person. $32 an hour and 19 cents is needed estimated for the average one adult with two children. $2.13 an hour is, like I said, the tipped employee base pay, but five million nine hundred and fifteen thousand one hundred and eighty six dollars is the average net worth of senators who blocked a vote to raise minimum wage in Congress. So now open it up for discussion. Is this a good thing or a bad thing for tipped employees? Bad. Tipping employ tipped employees actually like in, in a lot of these cases actually come out against the higher wage versus the tip because a lot of times they make more money on the tip than they do on their general wage. And I don't know how often you guys go out to eat, but I've been going out to eat more and more frequently, and usually the waiter or waitress is working three tables at the same time. And in a time of um, about 20 to 30 minutes or 40 minutes, however long it takes people to eat, they'll make tips on three to four tables, and that will definitely add up to more than the $5 gap between 213 and 725 So if the tipped employees are coming out against it normally, like I'm sure they get stiff from time to time, and we hear a lot of stories about that, then maybe like this is just a way for the um, owners of the restaurant to get in on the tip action by incorporating it into the price but not letting their servers get it. Good point. Yeah, Jeff, what do you yeah. 
I, I'm sort of I'm sort of mixed on this. Um, I've never worked for tips, so let me just put that out there. And I, and so you know, my my statements might come off as like, yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. And you'd be absolutely right. But but for me, like, I think I don't know. Like I said, I'm prone on this, but I would think that this would be a good thing because then at least you're guaranteeing them uh, that they would know how much they would make. But Sean brings up a great point. Like sometimes these tip workers do make out better, but it's not all the time. And so it seems like it's rather random. And I mean, let's talk about a little bit of why it's two thirteen an hour, or like two thirty or two thirteen an hour for tip workers. It's because of massive, massive lobbying by the restaurant industry. Of course, they don't want to pay higher wages, and. Uh, you know, of, of course, like they're going to go and buy Congress so that they can pay their workers two thirteen an hour, and then justify it by saying, "Well, look we'll, we'll how much money they're going to get in tips." Well, and they might get more because people are generous and people know that these people work for two thirteen an hour. Or, you know, when I go out to eat, for example, I love, I like, I leave tips. Right? I make sure, even if the service is kind of crappy, I still leave a tip because it's like, well, even if it's you know crappy service. This person has to eat, so overall, I, I would agree that we need to raise the minimum wage for everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out a little anecdotes because New York City was mentioned in there, and that's a, one of the places where a lot of the restaurant tours are raising the prices and encouraging people not to tip. Like, I, I was at a wedding um, of between a nurse and a New York City waiter, and the New York City waiter made more than the nurse. Because he worked in a super high-end Manhattan restaurant. Like, those people get tipped a ton. Like, the food is overpriced, and if people tip that 15 to 20%, it's ridiculous. So, like, I, I think a lot of this is owners trying... Some, some waiters are definitely getting cheated. Like, that's definitely a thing that's definitely out there. But Right, right, and, and not everybody works at those high-end restaurants. But I'm saying in Manhattan, where, where these people are raising the wages... And the waiters are rebelling. It's because they are they're what you call it. They're trying to get in on that money that the waiters and wait that the wait staff is getting. And right, like, well, like you know, if you could look step back and look at sort of the macro picture on this, is it a majority of wait staff that's that's? I I think you know, it is a majority. I think it is a majority of wait staff that makes more than the minimum wage based on their based on their tips. Like uh, John Adderall on the Young Turks. When they were discussing this on the main show, John Adderola was against this yep. when he used to be a waiter. And he was a waiter in Texas. Right. I would I would be against this too. You see, I, I think it's a bad idea because I know from experience living in Florida, for example, we lived in a very high tourism area. That means that most of the jobs that were available that didn't involve uh, some sort of higher education were restaurant jobs. And those people who got the tip jobs, they scrambled for the tip jobs. Everyone wanted the tip jobs because even if they did pay only two, uh, thirteen an hour or five dollars an hour, they knew they were going to make a lot more in tips than the person working in the back washing the dishes, working for minimum wage, was going to make. Always, every single time, even if they got stiff. So yeah, I think this is. Oh, I think Sean has a really good point. I think this is a way for restaurants to um, kind of get in on that action a little bit. And I also think that this is going to discourage people from supporting higher wages because they're going to see these vast um, increases in the price of their food, too, which is not necessary, especially for, for multi-chain restaurants. They can afford to just take a little bit, le they can take a less, uh, 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 a le you know, $2 million less in their multi-million dollar bonus once a year and freaking just absorb the cost, but they're not going to do that because they're greedy. And I, f I think that what they should do is what Washington State is in the process of doing, which is eliminating the tipped versus non-tipped pay gap making it one minimum wage and not discourage tipping because if I walked into one of those establishments that discouraged tipping, I'd tip anyway. I think that they deserve a fair minimum wage and tips. That's that's 
a, a long, to it, ages think... long benefit of being a server is that you get tips. Look, right. I, think I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to down on servers or anything, but like the the tips do cover the gap. Like there is a reason why they make a lower technical wage because the tips do cover the gap. So I don't like if if I'm a, and, and restaurant and restaurants tend to have like razor thin profit margins. So like it it is a sensible model. Like and and I think that the reason that these restaurateurs are trying to raise their wage and, and you know discourage tipping. Is to is to kind of like get at their money or save money or something like it's not it's not it's not that these waiters and waitresses are struggling. It's that these waiters and waitresses are making money that would that your restaurant owner would, would rather go into his pocket. Like that's why that's why tipping schemes like where they take your tips are illegal is because waiters uh, like restaurant owners tend to like try and get at your tips. And that's why tips are like protected income, and they don't let your your boss get even a percentage of it. So like I I I would I would I would I would kind of leave things the way they are. If you wanted to bump it up in your particular state because it costs a living, like to like a little higher, which some states do have it higher than that two thirteen, like that makes sense. But like for the most part, these people are covering are working at a higher than minimum wage wage. With the uh, with when tips are included and most and and like well, I, look, I don't see the problem with doing Ree's suggestion is but you're gonna have but a lot of restaurants might not be able to and, stay afloat if you do that. Well, it all depends. And you're gonna get the price increase anyway. Restaurants rest, restaurant owners do anything in their possibility to um to what you thought to not raise prices because. It's like an old, it's an old restaurant saying is you don't ever chase revenue by raising prices. Like they'll change the menu, they'll go in a completely different direction before they'll raise prices. They like really try not to do that. But when it comes down to the end of the day, the purpose of a business is to make as much money as possible as well. So, I mean, what what I'm saying I, I'm is, saying, I just saying like I would support anything that that benefits the workers because we know that and and the problem with you know uh, minimum wage and 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 you know. Tip, tip, wait staff as well. Is that no matter what, you're not making enough to survive. And I guess even if it's a wrong approach, you can kind of see that this might come from at least I, supporters. The, the, thing is, the thing is, is I don't think it, I don't think it's particularly an unfair arrangement. Like your average waiter and waitress, and I'm sure you can look this up, makes more than the minimum wage. Like, like, like I said, average. I haven't worked. I, I haven't worked as a waiter or or a waitress, so. Like, if anybody has in the audience... I mean, I, mean, I have an right? anecdote. I, just, I have an yeah. anecdote that I don't want to throw in because I don't think it's really that great. But I bagged groceries for a couple of days, and I made, like, as a just for tips, no wage, and I made, like, $80 each day on average. So, like... And it was, like, for three or four hours. So, like, people are generous when you tip. Like, people are generous when they tip, and all those tips do add up. Like, I wouldn't tax them the way we tax tips, but, like, that's a whole other issue. I just don't think it's a an inherently unfair arrangement the way it is now. Uh, actually, let me let me correct myself. I actually have worked as a tip worker. Uh, when I was back in high school, I worked at a conservation club, and I was actually making minimum wage plus tips, which was back then I was like five something. So, uh, you know, blast from the freaking past, you know what I mean? So I was making minimum wage plus tips, just what Ree was saying, and you know, I did fairly well. You still, you still were incentivized to go after the tip. Right. Absolutely. And and the thing is that even when the workers that I worked with at Pizza Hut, who were making the basic, regular seven twenty five minimum wage, who were also getting tips, they still didn't make enough to live comfortably and not have to worry paycheck to paycheck about whether or not they were going to be able to eat or afford to pay their bills. So it's not too much to ask to just set the federal minimum wage for everyone at a certain amount and just let tip people get tipped. I, I, and I think it would be nice to encourage tipping anywhere and everywhere that you can afford it. I, I don't know where you were working, Sean, but around here and back in Florida, in, in Ohio, nobody tips their bag boys. <laughs> so yeah, the, reason, the reason I didn't want to mention that is because I was a, I was young at the time, like really young, so I, that's an anecdote and I didn't want to mention that. But I don't even have a bag boy anymore. Like I bag my own groceries now when I go to the grocery store. Like they're like they they don't even they don't even help. 
They just let everything pile up and look at it. Like, I'm like, all right. But, uh, yeah, the thing is, is I don't think it's inherently an unfair arrangement. What I will caution, and I actually do this as a consumer, is I actually look up places' tipping policies to find out if they let the individual server get the tip or if they try and pool them together and divide them evenly at the end of the night. And I go to the ones where they let the individual get it. Yeah. I think you get better service there, and I think, like, if you put it in a pile and then divide it evenly, I think the boss is taking a cut somewhere on there. Like, that's just my conspiracy theory. It's also theory. not fair because better servers get gypped. Mm. Like, if you get a $50 tip from some really generous person one night, you don't want to freaking split that with everyone. You luck out. You keep it. And the only person you should split it with, and again, this is like restaurant industry stuff, is the busboy that helps you out. Like, they get like 20%. Oh, yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> 